Good morning. Good morning, Heather. Oh, very well. How was things with you? Are, are everything the same at the animal clinic? Yes, Uh huh. So, what do you, you hand the cat through the door? Uh huh. Very, very good. Well, nice to see you again. Uh, uh, we're off and on. Uh,
the Lord be with you. And well, it's good to be here in the house of the Lord to worship Him and thank Him for His love, for His mercy. Not only the you the Lord are here, but as well those who are watching us from home online. Uh, before we begin our service, I have a few announcements to, do to make. Uh, I know that everybody has the written order of service that we will follow, or you can follow from the monitors. And as well, we have a bulletin uh, that you could take uh, with few information there and announcements. But I'd like to, to mention that today we celebrate in the Christian Church the third Sunday in Lent. And as you know, when we are here, we, we thank God that allow us to be here in person. But we continue following the COVID-19 safety protocols. So I would ask you from you at the end of the service to remain in your seat for a short while, one minute, two minutes, something like that, while the ushers indicate you the time that you leave. Please no conversation inside the, the church. And I know this is incredible to say that from a pastor, but we have to do that. We would like to chat and have a conversation, especially if we haven't seen each other for a while. But we need to do this for our safety. So if you need to wait for the ushers to indicate the time that you have to leave, if there is conversation, has to be outside. Thank you. Other announcement is about uh, activities that we are doing here uh, at Faith and Grace. Uh, one of the things that I like to mention is in the bulletin is about what is truth campaign. So this billboard will be active tomorrow, Monday, March 8th. That will last until Easter, April 4th. So we are going to be praying every Sunday for this outreach initiative. And so I ask you as well to pray for this. Uh, I was not able to bring the billboard here with me to show you, but anyway. It's going to be tomorrow uh, in Southdale and Wonderland. But what I was able to bring to you is the package that we are going to do because we are going to do another outreach initiative. It is community outreach campaign. So we need volunteers. Please join us on Monday, March 22nd at 1 p.m to prepare and distribute uh, an average package like this one. So on this, what we have, we have two booklets. This is one, it's called Compact. Another that we have is Easter Story. Easter Story, and that we're gonna put it in this package on that day at one, and then we will go in the neighborhood to put it in the mailboxes of your homes. So if you could come, that would be great. But as well, we have a business card that speaks, uh, well, mentioned Pastor Schultz and myself, and the uh, address of the church, and websites on the back, and some biblical passages as well. So these are very nice uh, business cards that we did, where the church did as well and a letter from the pastor. So there will be four things in this package, and we need volunteers to come and help us to put that in the package. Even if you are not able to go on the street, on the houses, to put those uh, packages, if you could come and help us to put it all together, that would be great. We appreciate it. So just for you to know. Uh, another activity that we have Another thing is uh, I'd like to ask you help for ushers. If you are able to help us as ushers and help us during this COVID-19 in order to well, do the COVID-19 safety protocols and other things, you could speak with my answer or you could go to the office. And finally, for this week, remember that we have our in-person and live stream 
midweek Lenten service on Wednesday at 7 p.m. If you are not able to come on Sunday, please consider Wednesday or vice versa. If you are not able to come Wednesday, you could come on Sunday. We would like to have you at both days, but because COVID-19, I, I am encouraging, encouraging you to pick up one service only. And then we will be able to, well, to worship our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Well, we are ready to worship our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Please rise and let us begin with a silent prayer. We begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. We continue with the children's message, but first we're going to be singing with one hymn, God's love me the dearly. outside of, of our car could be very dirty and inside as well so we need to clean it and workplaces the church need to be clean as well if not it gets dirty so we need to clean today in one of the readings Jesus clean a place and who could tell me what that place he cleaned? If you remember, 
What about the other ones? The temple. The temple, yes. Which could be the church, for example. At that time, the temple. So, why? Why he did that? You know, he, he, he got upset. And he expelled all the people who were there because they were selling things there. For example, what they were selling, they were people selling cattle, sheep, and doves to be used as sacrifices in the temple. So that was convenient for the people to put all that stuff there. What else? There were some people, men, who were even charging people to change their money so they could pay their temple taxes. So what happened in the church, in the temple, it became a business. But that's not the purpose of the temple, of a church. It is to proclaim God's word, to hear God's word, to receive salvation, to receive the forgiveness, to be singing to the Lord, to praise Him. Do those things that are important for the congregation, for the church, and what we do. Cannot be a business, a church. And that's why Jesus got upset, because the purpose of the temple was not followable. Follow. So they were doing other things. That's not good. So that's why he expelled all those people and removed tables and everything. He got upset. We are now in Lent season. It's a time to see something that causes trouble in our heart, in our body. Because Jesus said, I'm going to read something here that says, the Bible tells us that we are the temple of God and that the Spirit of God lives in us. So now we became the temple of God in us, in our body. So we need to remove things that are not properly for our body. So in order to, to worship our Lord in the way that we're supposed to, to worship the Lord. So there, if there are things that are causing us trouble, that are not good, that we are breaking the commandments, for example, we need to remove those things from our body with God's help, because by ourselves we cannot do it. Ask the Lord to help us, to make us the way that He wants us to do, and be able to worship Him in, in, in our heart, and always to, well, to thank Him for being with us and helping us during this cleaning that we need to have in our body. So this is the message for all of us this morning, especially in this season of Lent. It's a good time for us to think about how our heart might need cleansing. Amen. So let us pray. Repeat after me, please. God, help us to remember that we are your temple and that your spirit lives in us. Help us to keep our lives clean and useful for service to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We sing four verses from him, 980.
the heavens declare the glory of God. And, and the, the sky above, above proclaims his handiwork. Day to day forth of speech. And, and night to night, night reveals knowledge. There is no speech but are their words, whose voice is not heard. Their measuring line goes out through all the earth, and their words to the end of the world. In them he has set a tent for the sun, which comes out like a bridegroom leaving his chamber, and like a strong man runs its course with joy. Its rising is from the end of the heavens, and its circuit to the end of them. And there is nothing hidden from its heat. The law of the Lord is perfect, reviving the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. The precepts of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The just decrees of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, even much fine gold. Sweeter also than honey, and drippings of the honeycomb. Moreover, by them is your servant born. In there is great reward. My dear friends in Christ, when we use the Ten Commandments and other parts of the moral code as a mirror, we see that we have fallen from the perfection of God's good creation and His perfect law. Who can discern His errors? Declare, Declare me innocent, innocent from, from my hidden faults. Keep back your servant, servants also from presumptuous sins. Let them not have dominion over me. Our, our gracious Lord has promised full and free forgiveness to all who call out to our Heavenly Father in His name. Let us therefore confess our sins to God, our Heavenly Father. Lord, speak. O oh God, oh God, we confess that we have sinned against you and one another in our thinking, speaking, and acting. Worse, in our fallen nature, we are sinful and unclean, and in the eyes of many we are weak, lowly people. But because you have graciously chosen us and worked faith in our hearts, we humbly ask your mercy for the sake of our Lord Jesus Christ. Forgive, renew, and lead us in paths of righteousness. <coughs> the foolishness of God is wiser than men, and the weakness of God is stronger than men. We preach Christ crucified, and for us the word of the cross is the power of God. As a call and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Thanks be to God. Then I shall be blameless and innocent of great transgressions. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord my rock and my redeemer. You may be seated when we sing him page 65. <laughs>
peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. For the peace of God's whole creation, for the well-being of all whom he has chosen to preach Christ crucified, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. For this holy house and for all who overgive them thanks for the blessings that flow from the cross of Christ, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. Help, Saint, comfort and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and also, also with you. you. Let us pray. O God, whose glory, whose glory it is always to have mercy. Be gracious, gracious to all who have gone astray from your ways, and bring them again with penitent hearts and steadfast faith to embrace and hold fast the unchangeable truth of your word. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. Let us hear God's word. The Old Testament reading for the third Sunday in Lent is from Exodus chapter 20. And God spoke all these words, saying, I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself a carved image, or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above, or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. You shall not bow down to them or serve them. For I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers on the children to the third and the fourth generation of those who hate me, but showing steadfast love to thousands of those who love me and keep my commandments. You shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless who takes his name in vain. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the, Sabbath, but the seventh day is the Sabbath to the Lord your God. On it you shall not do any work, you or your son or your daughter, your male servant or your female servant, or your livestock, or the sojourner who is within your gates. For in six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth, the sea and all that is in them, rested the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and made it holy. Honor your father and your mother, that your days may be long in the land that the Lord your God has given you. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. You shall not cover your neighbor's house. You shall not cover your neighbor's wife or his male servant, or his female servant, or his ox, or his donkey, or anything that is your neighbor's. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. O oh, come, let us fix our eyes on Jesus, the founder and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is seated at the right hand of the throne of God. The epistle lesson for today is from 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 18 to 31. The work of the cross is folly to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise, and the discernment of the discerning I will thwart. Where is the one who is wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the debater of this age? Has, has not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? For since in the wisdom of God, the world did not know God through wisdom, it pleased God through the folly of what we preach to save those who believe. For Jews demand signs and Greeks seek wisdom. But we preach Christ crucified, a stumbling block to the Jews and folly to Gentiles. But to those who are called, both Jews and Greeks, 
Christ the power of God and the wisdom of God. For the foolishness of God is wiser than men, and the weakness of God is stronger than men. For consider your calling, brothers. Not many of you were wise according to worldly standards. Not many were powerful. Not many were of noble birth. But God chose what is foolish in the world to shame the wise. God chose what is weak in the world to shame the strong. God chose what is low and despised in the world, even things that are not, to bring to nothing things that are, so that no human being might boast in the presence of God. He is the source of your life in Christ Jesus, whom God made our wisdom and our righteousness and sanctification and redemption. Therefore, as it is written, let the one who boasts, boast in the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Destroy this temple and in the name of the Lord, I will raise it up. Please rise to hear the gospel. The Holy Gospel, according to St. John, the second chapter. Glory, Glory to, to you, O Lord. Lord. And this reading will be the text for the sermon this morning. A Passover of the Jews was at hand, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. In the temple he found those who were selling oxen and sheep and pigeons, and the money changers sitting there. Making a web of cords, he drove them all out of the temple with the sheep and oxen, and he poured out the coins of the money changers and overturned their tables. And he told those who sold the pigeons, take these things away. Do not make my father's house a house of trade. His disciples remembered that it was written, seal for your house to consume me. So the Jews said to him, what sign do you show us for doing these things? Jesus answered them, Destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. The Jews then said, It has taken 46 years to build this temple, and will you raise it up in three days? But he was speaking about the temple of his body. When therefore he was raised from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said this, and they believed the scripture and the word that Jesus had spoken. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated while we say him, 707. <clears throat>
this morning with God's help. Our meditation is from the Gospel of John, chapter 2, verses 13 to 22. And for your information, this sermon was written by Pastor Schultz, who had planned to be with us this Sunday. But he will wait until Dr. Fregmanesian tomorrow when he's going to come back with us. But he's okay, so thanks God. We continue praying for him. The theme for this sermon is called Jesus' Actions Drive Us to Come Back. My dear friends in Christ, a, a little over 10 years ago, a survey came out in the USA in Canada that was built upon the results of 300 interviews of people who came from a wide variety of backgrounds. Those who were interviewed came from different ethnicities as well as various social and economic levels. Very different people. But they all share one thing in common. All of them were unchurched and not Christians. So they interviewed these people and gathered the data and went over the results and shared with each other what they had learned. I want to share two of the surprising insights. One of the insights they discovered that surprised them was of those people interviewed and church not Christians, 96% said they were somewhat, somewhat likely to come to church if someone invited them. So the application is pretty obvious. Do not underestimate the power of inviting someone to church. The second insight that I want to share with you is these people, and church and not Christian. Many of them had a background in church. So the researchers came to the conclusion that we should not assume that people are clueless when it comes to church, when it comes to Christianity. They said the reasons why people leave Christianity are very complex. But sometimes it is as simple as somebody had a bad experience in church. So I decided to do some of my own research. I did an internet search on bad church experiences and instantly there were 74 million results. I read them all. Well, no. <laughs> I am just kidding. Oh, that's good. I read a few of them and they were really sad. I secretly hope they did not happen, but I suspect they did. I want to share just a couple of those bad church experiences. There was a family who came to a church. They sat down in a pew and started to settle in when the people behind them tapped a shoulder and said, ah, you cannot sit there. That's Aunt Lucy's fault. Oh, we are sorry. We are visitors and we have never been here before. We do not know who sits where. We will be happy to move. Well, the rest of the service, that family watched to see who Aunt Lucy was. Well, the service ended and she never came. As they were leaving, the pastor approached them and said, Hey, I noticed you were sitting in that row over there and the people behind you said something and you moved. May I ask what they said? The family said, they told us it was Aunt Lucy's spot. And he said, oh really? Aunt Lucy has been dead for 10 years. 
Another story, perhaps a little humorous, but maybe not for the person who is involved in it. A person walks into the church and an usher hands him a children's bulletin in a box of crayons. He said to the visitor, well, you can color on this during church. Which is all fine and well, except the person was 20 years old at the time. Now, I could go on with stories like that, but you can imagine what such experiences did to those people. Do you think any of them came back to the church? The answer is no. They all left and did not return at least to that particular church. The actions of these people drove them away and the result was they did not return. Sadly, we have hearts of sins and those hearts are going to say and do things that are going to drive people away from church at times. We ask for Jesus' forgiveness for that. And we take comfort that Jesus alone is the perfect person. But you would never expect that Jesus, the sinless Son of God, would ever do anything to drive someone from church. In fact, in these stories, I found online of people with bad experiences. They would often point to Jesus and say, Jesus would never do that. Jesus was loving, and Jesus was caring, and Jesus was welcoming. And all of that is true. But then in John 2, we see Jesus, and he's holding a web in his hands, and he's driving people away from his father's house. And you and I may say, that this is not a sight Jesus we are used to seeing. Why is Jesus driving people away from his father's house? What we are going to see today is even though he is driving people away, the reason why he drives them away is why we keep coming back. The driving away of people is the reason we keep coming back. To God's house. So let us find out why as we read John chapter 2. I'm going to read again verses 13 through 17. The Passover of the Jews was at hand and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. In the temple he found those who were selling oxen and sheep and pigeons and the money changers sitting there making a web of cords, he drove them all out of the temple, with the sheep and oxen, and he poured out the coins of the money changers, and overturned their tables, and he told those who sold the pigeons, take those things away, do not make my father's house a house of trade. His disciples remembered that it was written, sin for your house will consume me. Friends, have you noticed how quickly things have changed in recent years for the sake of convenience? Take shopping for instance. There was a time when you made a purchase you would first need to go to your financial institution for money or checks. Once you had done so, you would then proceed to the store and make the purchase. Nowadays, we are able to pay directly for our items with debit or credit cards. And we do not even have to remember our four-digit personal identification number since we can tap to make the purchase. So why has this happened? It is for our convenience. It was convenience that was going on in our gospel reading today. It was Passover time. And Jews from all over the world would come back to Jerusalem. But we have to remember that for the Passover, a lamb was needed. Now let us suppose you live in Antioch, Syria, nearly 800 kilometers away from Jerusalem. 
and you needed a lamb for Passover. Now you could bring your own lamb. You could travel this whole distance and bring along this little lamb along with you. But the towns around Jerusalem got smart and they got close to Passover season. They began to stock up with all types of animals for temple sacrifices, including lambs, sheep, cattle, and birds. All these things were around so that when you came to Jerusalem, you pick up your animal and you went to the temple. But you still had to have the animal inspected by a priest. It could not have a blemish or a defect. So the priest would examine the animal closely and say, okay, it is good. Well, the people got to thinking, there is an easier way to do this. What if we had the priest we look at the animal to make sure it is okay? And then rather than sell it in the surrounding towns and villages, what if we sold it right by the temple? So you do not have to bring an animal with you to the city. You just go to the temple and they are right there, good to go. Well, even that was too much. So they said, what if instead of outside the temple, we were to move the animals inside the temple? And there is one more thing going on here. There was a temple tax that Jews had to pay. And if you are traveling for a foreign country and you have foreign currency, you would have to exchange your currency. So why go to Jerusalem, bank, bank, when you could do that at the temple? It was convenient. It was very convenient for these people to pick up the, their animals, exchange their money right there in the temple. They had the buying and the selling and the exchange done very conveniently. But it was all very distracting from the purpose of the temple and the purpose of the Passover. And so Jesus takes some cords and he weaves them together and he begins to crack a web and he's driving out the money changers and driving out these animals. Jesus is flipping over tables and saying, how dare you turn my father's house into a market? And we are not used to seeing Jesus like this, are we? I very much doubt you have pictures of Jesus holding a web in your house, in your homes. But do not we need to see Jesus like this at times? There are two verses I would like you to look up, up later. 1 Corinthians chapter 6 verses 19 and 20. And it makes a comparison between your body and something in the scripture. You know what it compares you to? I'll give it to you. It's, it says, Do you not know your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you? You are not your own. You were bought at a price. Therefore honor God with your body. Are not there times our bodies and the things of our bodies like our hearts and our thoughts that do not belong but are to be driven out? The answer is yes. Scripture says in Ephesians chapter 4 to get rid of bitterness from your life. So yes, there are times when we need to see Jesus with a web driving those things out of our lives, our hearts. We do not like to see Jesus like this, but we are not there times when you and I need to be reminded how serious God is about worship and what God wants in worship. These Jews in our text had it down. 
convenience, efficiency. I will pick up the lamp, I will exchange the coins. I am in, I am out, I am home. I think of my own life. When I was young, that's how I approached worship. What's convenient? What's efficient? As a pastor's kid, we live in a personage next to the church for a number of years. On Sunday morning, I had it down to the minute. My alarm would go off at night, 15 a.m., allowing me just the right amount of time to change grab a bowl of cereal and get to Sunday school with a couple minutes to spare. I also had it down to the cent as to how much money I was comfortable giving in my offering before it would impact my life in the things I wanted to buy for myself. I had it down to the second, and by the way my dad was the pastor, that when the service went a minute or two over the hour, that was my allotted time, by the way. I would remind him that the service went a little too long. I suggested he cut the sermon a little next time. <laughs> Is that what God wants? Does God wants us to be efficient and convenient in worship? Does God says in heaven, Hey, my children, I really want an hour of your time. I really want a few of your dollars and coins. I really want those lamps. We have to realize God does not want that. You know what God wants? He wants you. He wants your heart. He wants your whole heart. Jesus said, said this one time, I desire mercy, not sacrifice. In other words, God does not desire all those things. All those sacrifices, He desires mercy. God wants us to know our need for His mercy and how He provided in Christ. God wants His house and the business of His house not to be about what we do for Him first and foremost, but what He has done for us. Do you understand why Jesus was driving people from the temple that day and why He keeps us coming back? Because Jesus was very protective. He was defending His Father's house so that it remained a place of grace a place of worship. It would be a home where people would come and hear about God delivered, how God delivered His people. What was the whole purpose of the Passover? Israel was enslaved in Egypt, and God, through the blood of the Lamb, delivered them. And every time that they celebrated the Passover, it was a looking back to say, God deliver us and I'm looking forward to how God will deliver us through the blood of Jesus the Lamb. And when that began to get distracted, when that started to get lost, Jesus took a whip and cracked it because he had sealed for God's deliverance. When those things start to get lost today too, what God does and gives in his house to Christ he cracks a web so it does not get lost. That was the purpose of the Passover. Do you know what the purpose of the temple was? Even though God is omnipresent, He is everywhere. He chose to make His dwelling known in a special way. He would make His presence right there in the temple. And this was pointing forward to something in Jesus. That in Christ Jesus, God made his dwelling among us. And when that was getting lost and abused and worldly things were distracted people, Jesus cracked the web so we could not lose sight of his promises. When that gets lost in our lives too, God's promises 
God's grace is not afraid to defend it and protect it. This is how much He loves us. But God does not just defend it. There is something more on Jesus' mind than just defending His house. I would like to read the rest of the text, verses 18 to 22. So the Jews said to him, What signs do you show us for doing these things? Jesus answered them, Destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. The Jews then said, It has taken 46 years to build this temple, and will you raise it up in three days? But he was speaking about the temple of his body. When therefore he was raised from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said this, and they believed the scripture and the word that Jesus had spoken. These words put this whole text in perspective. If you are still wondering why Jesus drove them out and why his actions have us coming back, just look at what is Jesus talking about that day. So there were some offended Jews, and they come up to Jesus and say, How dare you? What give you the right and authority to, to drive these people out? And what does Jesus want to talk about? The resurrection. He said, destroy this temple. He's talking about his body, and I will raise it in three days. Just think about that for a moment. The thing on Jesus' mind that he wanted to share in God's house was how he would raise again and the hope that would bring to this world of sin and death. Is not that why you come? Whether it be in person or through our live stream, to hear the hope this Savior brings to this world of sin and death. We come because we realize we have a Savior who is willing to crack the web to drive out those things in our hearts and lives that do not belong. But we also have a Savior who was willing to be cracked by a web and who was willing to go onto a cross so that he could wash away every one of those sins that we have. We have a Savior whose body, body was laid in the tomb for three days and rose again on a Sunday, so that every single Sunday we are able to say, Thank you, Jesus, for the greatest things that ever happened to us. Thank you for raising from the dead. It gives us hope. We have a Savior who one day when my body and your body is laid to rest in the ground, our families and friends will have the hope that that Savior on the last day is going to take that body and raise it anew to join my soul and your soul with him in heaven. My dear friends in Christ, keep coming back to Jesus in his word and in his house because this is what he wants to, to talk about. He wants to talk about the hope he has and the grace he brings. And when things get in the way, he's not afraid to drive them out. He's not afraid to remove them. And one day, by God's grace, through faith, we will be welcomed into the Father's house, never driven away to be with him forevermore. Amen. Please rise and let us confess our Christian faith speaking the Apostle. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, 
was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray for the church here and around the world, and for people everywhere in the various circumstances. Lord, over all, we give thanks that the heavens declare your glory, and we pray your blessings on all who seek ways to use the resources of your good creation to feed the hungry, heal the sick, and shelter the homeless. Guide them to our bountiful harvest and life-saving technologies. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our, Hear our prayer. O Lord, who brought your people Israel out of slavery in Egypt, hear the prayer of those who long for freedom, for oppressive regimes, forced imprisonment, poverty, and social discrimination, awaking a desire for peace, justice and human dignity in the citizens and leaders of all the nations. Give them compassionate eyes so that they may seek to help one another, relieving hunger and despair with loving and sharing actions. Guide and protect armed forces deployed and those who work for peace and security in our local communities. Open our eyes to the vocation we have as people of faith each day. Lord, you can see. Hear, Hear our prayer. Wise and loving Heavenly Father, who chose those whom the world considered foolish, weak, lowly, and despised to be joined in the body of Christ, give us your strength and wisdom. Open doors of opportunity for the church to preach Christ crucified, and raise it no matter the form of opposition they encounter. So that, the, so that many will come to faith. A strengthen clarity of lay leaders to focus not on institutions or statistics, but on the righteousness, sanctification, and redemption of Savior One in His gracious sacrifice for us in, in grace and love. Lord, in mercy. Hear our prayer. My God, you have called your church to witness that in Christ you have reconciled us to yourself. Grant that by your Holy Spirit we may proclaim the good news of your salvation so that all who hear it may receive the gift of salvation. We pray to you, Lord, that our What is Truth campaign, which begins tomorrow, March 8, and our community outreach campaign for March 22nd, Bring good results according to your word. The people come to the knowledge of Christ through these outreach initiatives, and they rejoice in our salvation and gather them into your holy church to the glory of your name. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. prayer. Bountiful giver of every blessing, we rejoice to give, to give you thanks for your great mercies to all the families of this congregation. Day by day, without any merit or worthiness in us, your good gifts shower down upon us. We thank you today particularly for Ted, Pam, and Garth, for Mike and Natasha, for Matthew, for Mike and Susan, and for Nidia, Nick, and Victoria. Also, we thank you for another year you have given to Anne, to Yagoa, Ashley and Marcus, who are celebrating their birthdays this week. Lord, continue blessing them and keep them safe from danger every day of their life. As well, we remember kids and children who are celebrating their wedding anniversary this week. Keep their love for each other, their unity, and keep their faith in you despite.
fight the fires of this life. Lord, give mercy. Hear our prayer. prayer. We ask your grace to answer the prayers of those near and dear to us, including Eric, Rob, Jeff, Chris, Martha, Sylvia, David, Beth, Bill, and Vicky, Patrick James, Kathleen, Stacy, and Son, Karen, Nancy, Mercia, Myra, Jordan, Patricia, Sandra, Dennis, and Sarah, Doreen, Grace, Nancy, Marcia, Matthew, Nancy, Eric, Martin, Elsie, Alan, Ann, Shirley, Keith, Mark, Frank, Sarah, Alice, Christina, Stacy, and family, Denver, Bill, and Sandy, Lloyd, and Elsie, Ed, Walter, and Donna, Anna, Becky, John, Irene, Susan, August, Geraldine, Anne, and Mike, Ryan, Marianne, and family, Rita, Marcus, and Risto, Odise, and her family, and for those we name in our hearts and minds. Visit, relieve, counsel, and uplift them according to your plans. Use it as, where possible, as part of the answer to their petitions. These and any other things you would have us ask of you, Heavenly Father, grant to us for the sake of the bitter sufferings and death of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. 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 Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Receive the blessing of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen.
Thanks to all for coming, to those who watch us from home. Wonderful, God bless you. And we're gonna leave in an orderly manner. Please stay, remain there seated until the, the ushers tell you the time to, to leave. So we will not take too much time. So go in peace, as you serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. You have two exits. This this side you can leave as well, and the other one as well.